Okay, let's take a look at this problem I've relabeled homework 4.1. For the bridge deck of a multi-span bridge shown below, determine if a W33 by 118 would support the dead and live loads. The distance between each pier is 80 feet. What recommendations would you make based on your calculations? So we're going to say, yes, this girder will work, or no, it won't. Um, so here's our information. We have our jersey barriers. Uh, we have our wearing surface here of 16 feet separating each girder, uh, 15 inch uh, deck slab, and three feet of concrete above each girder. So we're going to start off just looking at our steps. So uh, our steps to check the steel girder requirements. Our step one is just writing down our givens. So we have the yield strength of steel. Uh, we're going to have information about our deck form, uh, concrete due to deflection. I also added here concrete density, asphalt wearing surface information, and jersey barrier information. So those are just standards that we're going to use in this course. And so for step one, I'm just going to write down givens. Don't have to rewrite all of that onto this homework problem. So step one uh, are just the givens. And step two is really givens as well. Um, we're going to use some of those givens that we've seen and uh, add them up to find the total miscellaneous dead load. So for step two, we're going to use that information about the steel deck forms. That is three pounds per square foot. The concrete in the form valleys, we're just going to say it's one inch. Convert that to feet and multiply that by that density of concrete that was given in step one to get 12.5. And then add on the concrete due to form deflection, again, given here at 5.21. Add those all up and come up with a total miscellaneous dead load of 20.71 pounds per square foot. So just going to write that down into step two here. That our total miscellaneous dead load, remember that's not the total dead load. Uh, we'll see how that gets calculated in a minute here. 20.71 pounds per square foot. Or we can write it this way. All right, let's go on to step three where we'll actually do some calculations here. For step three, we're going to uh, convert this non-composite dead load into a load per linear foot of bridge length uh, between the girders. So remember when we're looking at this situation, we have this 16 foot span between each girder, but when we do this analysis, we're really interested, as Ashto says, in this center girder, the interior girder, and this distance be between uh, each section of interest is 16 feet. Okay, we have 16 feet here, we have 16 feet here, we have 16 feet here. So we're really doing our analysis on a 16 foot section. So that information that we have 16 foot girder spacing because we have this uh, equally sized bridge is going to work out really well for us to look at this 16 foot section that's impacting this interior girder. So for step three, I'm just going to take that 20.71 uh, that I have from step two uh, pounds per square foot and multiply it by that section of interest, that 16 feet here. And when I do that, I wind up with 331.4 pounds per foot. And that's what I'm looking for here in steps three, four, and five, uh, is accumulating that pounds per foot, that weight per uh, linear foot of distance, so I can come up with a total dead load. But let's keep accumulating here and go on to step four. Uh, for step four, I'm looking at three components, the deck weight, the buildup, and the beam. And we don't have to select a beam size for this uh, problem because it's already been given to us. We're checking to see if the beam size will work. So the first thing is the deck weight. I figure that out by taking my girder spacing again, my section of interest multiplying it by the deck thickness, making sure I convert that to feet, and then multiplying that by that density of concrete, which we're using 150 pounds per cubic foot. So let's do that component first, the deck weight. And so it's the 16 foot girder spacing. It's the 15 inch thickness, but then converted, 15, uh, converted to feet, one foot 
for 12 inches. And then it's the density of concrete, that 150 pounds per cubic foot. So all three components put in there to find the deck weight. And so we come up with a total deck weight of 3,000 pounds per foot. All right, but that's just one component of step four. We have three components. Like I said, we also have the concrete buildup over the top flange. So we're going to take a look again at this interior girder, look at the top flange here and see how much concrete's above it. We see that there's three inches of concrete above this flange, so we're going to assume that's consistent here. So what we really are interested in is what is the width of this flange so we can figure out uh, how much concrete is there. And remember we get that flange width, that B sub F, uh, from our table, our uh, American Institute of Steel Construction table that's in the appendix. So let's look that up, that B sub F on the back table. And for this problem, we're dealing with a W33 by 118 girder. So as always, uh, you can highlight that girder of interest. So you're making sure you're pulling off your information from the correct line. And for our W33 by 118, we find a flange width, a B sub F, of 11.5 inches. So we're going to have to convert that to feet, multiply it by that concrete thickness above, and then the 150. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to call that step the concrete buildup. So we'll take that 11.5 inch flange width, change that to feet, take the three inches of concrete above, above each one of these, change that to feet, and then multiply that by that density of concrete again. Okay, and when we put that all in, we wind up with a concrete buildup of 35.9 pounds per foot. All right, but step four, still not done. We have one more component we're going to put in here, and that's just the girder weight. And you can go back to your table and look that up, but we know our girder, we're given our girder size, it's that W33 by 118 and remember the second number here is the weight per foot so we just know that that's going to be 118 pounds per foot so we're going to add up our three components here the deck weight the concrete buildup and the girder weight to get a total for step four and we get a total of 3,153.9 pounds per foot all right, so we have a total for step one, and we have a total for step three. But we still don't have our total uh, distributed load yet because we're going to take a look at our secondary loads as well. And so we're going to call that step five. And for our secondary loads, we're going to look at two um, loads. We're going to look at the asphalt, the future bituminous wearing surface, and the jersey barriers. And so we have two equations we're going to use for those. Um, first, for our uh, future wearing surface, we're going to use the distance of the wearing surface minus 2 times the width of that jersey barrier at the bottom. And take that whole quantity and multiply it by 20 pounds per square foot, which is our information about our jersey barrier. And then divide that by our number of girders. So let's take a look at that. So this is our future wearing surface. That will be our first calculation. And we saw up here it's the 48 feet. So we'll take 48 feet, but then subtract those two Jersey barrier widths from that 1.5417 feet. Take that whole quantity, multiply it by the 20 pounds per square foot that we were given in step one and then divide that by our total number of girders 
in our system here we have three girders. And so we will do that math and we come up with 299.4 uh, pounds per foot. All right, then let's do the second part of step five. Slide on a piece of paper here. Um, now we're gonna look at the Jersey barriers. So we'll take that information here. We know we're gonna have two. Gonna have two barriers. We're gonna make an assumption that they're 30, 371 pounds per foot each. Uh, again, that was given in step one, and then we're going to divide that again by our three girders. And so that's going to give a total of 247.3 pounds per foot. All right, so now we're finished steps one through five. Our goal in step six is to put all this information to come up with a distributed dead load. So let's move on here to step six. Actually, we can total up our step five first. Let's do that first. Uh, 299.4 plus the 247.3, we get a total of 546.7 pounds per feet. So now we have three totals to put together into our step six. In our step six, we're going to find that total dead load. We're going to call that our little w. So we're going to add up um, our step two, our step three, which was the 331.4 pounds per foot, plus our step four total, 3153.9 pounds per foot, plus our step five total, 546.7 pounds per foot. We add those all up and we get a total of 4032 pounds per foot but it's going to be much more useful to have this in kips per foot so I'm just going to divide by a thousand so I get 4.032 kips per foot but two decimal places is going to do it for us for our uh, needs here so we're just going to use a W of 4.03 kips per foot all right, but we're not done step six yet uh, because we haven't found the dead load. We found the distributed load, but we still want to find the dead load. And remember, once we found that W, uh, we're interested in moments here. Um, so we're going to take that W, multiply it by the length of the span squared, and divide by eight, which will give us uh, units of kips feet for our dead load. So let's go ahead and do that for to finish up step six here. So our dead load is going to equal that WL squared over 8. And in this case, it's the 4.03 kips per foot times that span length from the original problem statement of 80 feet squared, all divided by 8. Plug that into your calculator. I get 3. 224 kip feet. All right, for my dead load. And that's what I'm going to have to plug in as I go further along through my steps here. I'm going to stop this recording here and we'll do another recording that gets us through our next six steps to find out whether this girder will work or not.